Today's show is packed. I'm going to talk about Sambo, and I'm going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, Jujigatami, but a very important position, how to control people to get Jujigatami. So if you want to know more about that stuff, stay tuned. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Scott, and welcome to another episode of Freestyle Judo. Today's show uh, may be a bit longer than normal. I've been getting kind of windy lately, but uh, hopefully I'll cut down on that. I'll try to get as much in as I possibly can in a short amount of time. But today, we're going to talk about two subjects. We're going to talk about Sambo, a brief introduction to Sambo, just a little bit on it, and I'm going to show a very specific throw uh, from Sambo that's, that's that when you see it you'll say oh that's a Sambo throw so we're gonna we're gonna show that today It'll be a short clip early on that about that but then later I'm gonna spend a lot of time talking about a very important position on how to control someone when you're doing jujigatami or a variety of different things it's called the leg press and uh, that's a bit of a tease here so later in the show we're gonna show several videos on how to do the leg press I think this is an important position that uh, uh, we tend to overlook when we're teaching ground fighting in general. So, so much for that. But uh, to get right on this, get, let's get going here. Um, Sambo. Uh, basically, it's an acronym for the uh, the Russian Self Defense Without Weapons. And I'm going to do just a brief, um, you know, look at it today. We're going to do a, a show on Sambo eventually. Uh, because I really enjoy Sambo. I've been doing it for a number of years, and it's a, it's a fabulous sport. Um, it, it's very similar to Judo. Uh, a, lot, a lot of you guys know that you see Sambo guys in, in the red and blue jackets and the shorts and the shoes, and you see the Judo people doing what they do. Um, Sambo is, uh, it, it's, it, like I said, it means self-defense without weapons. It was officially inaugurated as a sport uh, you know, within the Soviet government back in, in the old days of Stalin in 1938, in November of 1938. And it wasn't called Sambo up until about that point of time. It was called different things. It was called freestyle judo, believe it or not, uh, just freestyle wrestling. Um, it, it went by several different names, and it, it was officially titled Sambo in 1938. And it, it became a very popular sport with the military and then with the, uh, the civilians as well. Uh, it's it's a it's a big international sport. Um, it's it's practiced and done in many countries, primarily the old Soviet bloc countries, from when the Soviet Union was in existence, and they had a lot of influence in, in their sporting uh, development, and uh, so it's very strong there. But it's really grown to a lot of the uh, non-Soviet bloc nations, such as the United States, other places as well. So <clears throat> it is a uh, it's a big international sport, uh, and there are two very variants, variants of sambo. There are two types of sambo now. <clears throat> Uh, one is the Borba Sambo, or the grappling uh, Sambo, that is, is quite popular. But another one that's gained a lot of popularity, and that was the first type of Sambo that was really developed sport-wise in 1938, the Borba Sambo. Then uh, the Combat Sambo was officially recognized, I think, about the year 2000. Just about that year, I might be right, might be wrong, but it's around 2000. And it's more of what you see a lot of the MMA fighters have come from, like uh, uh, Fedor, people like that. They're very good uh, combat sambo guys, and the rules are different. In Borba Sambo, grappling sambo, um, it's, it's very similar to judo, uh, throws um, and takedowns and transitions, that type of thing, um, arm locks and uh, leg locks, and, but no strangles. Okay, And you can also do hold downs, pinning techniques, but you, you can't win the match with a, a pin like in the IGF rules of judo. Uh, so that's the Borba Sambo. That's the sport, uh, you know, the grappling style Sambo. Now, in the combat Sambo, uh, they, they have headgear, they have gloves, uh, you know, gloves similar to MMA type gloves, leg, uh, leg padding, uh, foot guards, that, that type of thing. Of course, they wear mouth guards too. Uh, and they can punch and kick each other in the Borba Sambo. Of course, they still wear the Sambo jacket, the whole outfit, uh, but it's, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's, it really is combat Sambo. It is a brutal affair. It is a tough game. Uh, in, in Borba Sambo, you can punch and kick, do everything you can do in grappling Sambo, uh, but you can also use strangles and chokes. 
So it's a very, <laughs> a very rough self-defense type sport, and it, um, it you know, like like we said many years ago, a reporter in Kansas City was covering a, a, one of our national tournaments that wasn't for combat sambo, it was for borba sambo, but he said sambo isn't for the faint of heart. And that's absolutely correct. And when you see combat sambo, especially. So uh, a little bit about that. That's a bit of the history and about the rules. Uh, <clears throat> and the, the uniforms, the, the, the outfits we wear in sambo are different than judo. The judo gi, as we all know, is a white or blue. <clears throat> and um, in the sambo uh, outfit, the kurtka, the jacket, is either blue or red. In the early days, there were different colors. There were white, different colors. But now it's settled in the International Sambo Federation. It's either blue or red. And I've got a jacket here. belongs to my great friend and coach, uh, uh, Jim Schneeweiss. And I don't know if you can see it on camera here, but uh, I'll hold it up. And you, you see this along here? This is uh, an epaulet, uh, you know, it's the grip at the, at the shoulder area. And it looks, you know, just like a sambo, very, it looks like a judo gi very much. The sleeves are a bit shorter, and it, it's a bit shorter at the apron at the body. And I don't know if you can catch it up on camera here, but the belt, it has loops that if you can see there, the loops uh, that uh, the belts go through to stay on. So um, that's what the jacket looks like. And it is, like I said, shorter, tighter. Um, it's a little tougher to grip. Um, and of course, we were. Uh, uh, shorts and and sh sambo shoes you can wear wrestling shoes if you wish but in international competition they they do require you to wear the regular sambo shoes and they're very soft leather shoes they're kind of like moccasins in a way uh but they but they hold the mat very well and they um, they allow you to do foot sweeps and, and move it, it's really a good idea to wear shoes i guess that type of grappling shoes if you want to protect your feet and certainly it's done in sambo so that's a little bit of what the Sambo jacket looks like. And I'm kind of answering my question and answer uh, deal here on a segment of the show because um, I did have a, a question. Um, what's the difference between a Sambo jacket and a judo uniform? So that, um, with that person who sent that in, uh, emailed that to me, that's your answer right there. And that kind of prompted the segment on Sambo anyway. So thanks for asking that very good question. Um, but what we're going to do now is a, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to show you a uh, video. It's about... Uh, a little over three minutes long, um, three and a half minutes long. Uh, Derek and Eric, are, are, were, uh, we were teaching some Sambo at John Saylor's Shingitai training camp several years ago, and I did this video of them. Um, this is a uh, what's called a leg lace throw. Uh, it's very similar to Judo's Obitori Gaishi, and uh, well, you'll see it here. And also it has elements of Kawazugaki, or leg entwining. But you'll see how we do it, and I'll talk a little bit after the video on how you can do this throw without injuring your opponent's legs. But you'll see Derek do it here, and uh, let's get to that clip right now. closer here so I can go through this nice and slow. Okay, again, I'm breaking him down. Now, a lot of times when we do this, the guy kind of hops his hips backwards, okay? So you notice he's not in my armpit anymore, so it's gonna be difficult for me to do that step in knee left, okay? He's now completely off. I'm not, I don't have enough torque to do it. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna step in and lace his leg, okay? Most people are like, oh, you're just gonna, you know, like trip him. No, I'm lacing his leg so I can hop into it, okay? And then now he's stuck here, okay? The leg lace keeps him from being able to run around the corner, okay? If he tries it, there's a bunch of different variations to it, but usually you just end up throwing him harder. Okay, got this there, he pops out, step in, and lace, okay? That lace keeps him from being run, able to run away from me. It also gives me the opportunity to pull him in nice and tight to my armpit, okay? Then hopping again so that I'm facing him. And as soon as I get that, I start the twist. And as soon as I feel it, I lift and then look behind me. Okay? Don't hop back. I want to keep it right here. Okay? Hop in. You good? Yeah. Notice how high they get. I'm going to okay. come around a different position, you, you two are viewers. Welded into the guy usually when you get that. Okay? And the, the fact that you're able to lift him from that position makes it a huge big throw, okay? And it's mostly because of the leg wrap. The leg wrap 
rocks his leg there so that you can get in tight enough to do this. Does the leg rock also depend from him picking you up? Yes. Good point. Sean Dock, this does keep what we call a leg jam or leg wrap to keep him from picking you up. Right. If he tries to lift you, that's as far as it's going to happen. Okay, so it's a good defensive move too. Yeah. It also is used in Sambo to basically keep him from moving. We'll use it just to park him there yeah. before we decide, oh, well, now we're going to throw him. So it's often used, that leg wrapping movement is a really offensive movement as well, but it's also a defensive movement. So, and I'll use it a lot when I'm, I'm in judo and I've got a guy, like a new guy who just wants to pick me up and slam me. As soon as he does that, boom, I'm lacing his leg and I'm just like, all right, where are we going now? You know, he puts me down, I hop in, and over you go, okay? You're so tight on the person, as soon as you hop in, he's gonna go over no matter what, okay? The only difference here is that you have to lean back a little bit more, okay? I'm not saying try and bend over backwards or fall over backwards. You just lean back and look, and as soon as you get that, the knee unwinds and you lift. Okay? We go through it one more time. Boom. Okay. Leg lace. Pop in. Okay. There we go. Good. Okay, just a few things to wrap up about that video on the uh, leg lace throw that Derek uh, and Eric did so so well there. Um, as you noticed, uh, the, the Kawazu Gaki action or the, the leg entwining type thing, it, it, is, it is a dangerous move if you do it incorrectly. So uh, be sure you do that as Derek showed how to do in the video. And also, did you notice that he, when he, when he threw Eric, he lifted and rotated around his body in, in a way. That body rotation that, that, that the thrower does um, alleviates some of the pressure on the knee and it, it's it, so it lessens the, the chance of, of injuring it <clears throat> but if you are concerned about uh, that kawazugaki action and it can be can be injurious to the, to the knee um, then don't do it if you don't feel, feel it's safe don't do that particular move however personally I've never seen anyone injured with that particular throw we did in that video so that being said that's why I showed it if, uh, if, I, if I thought it was dangerous I wouldn't have showed it so <clears throat> Just a little side note about that, and I think that's important to know when you're doing that type of throw. Again, it's very similar to the, uh, that throw is very similar to Obitori Gaishi that's seen in judo, uh, but this throw has its, uh, the, the way we presented it in the video, uh, is, a, is a tried and true sambo throw, comes directly from Chita Oba, the Georgian form of grappling and wrestling, um, <clears throat> that um, uh, it, when, when sambo was developed in the, in the early part of the 20th century, uh, its base was judo. And, um, but other elements of, of different types of wrestling styles from the various republics of the Soviet Union all came into play. And certainly uh, Georgia has a, a great tradition of uh, belt and, and jacket wrestling in their Cheetah Oba. And uh, <clears throat> this is direct descendant of one of the throws from Cheetah Oba. So that's a little bit of the history. I think it makes it interesting uh, all the more. Uh, so let's, but uh, that being said, let's get into, um, Kind of the main body of what we're doing today's show about. It's going to be long. I have uh, seven uh, segments here, so bear with me. But I do want to cover this subject thoroughly. And um, this is what people call the uh, Jujigatami position. <clears throat> and I, years ago, I looked at it. I said, well, you know, other people said the same thing. You can do more than Jujigatami from this position. And uh, you'll see what I mean when we show you the this first clip here. But uh, I, I named it the leg press position because you're pressing your opponent down and controlling with your legs. And basically, when you roll somebody over, an opponent over onto his back, he's on his back, belly up, um, and you're controlling him with your legs across him and trying to apply jujigatami, that's what the leg position is, the, the leg press is. So we're going to show you that. But again, you can do more than just Jujigatami from here. And we're going to, as we go on with the show today, you'll see what I mean. So let's look at this first clip on the leg press position, the basics of it, and how to control someone when he's down in the leg press position. Very important to do that. So here we go on the first uh, video here. Here we go. You roll them over, let it hit, roll, hit. Roll. Somehow we got, Derek got Mike down. Somehow he's got the basics. You guys, remember also, if you're on the bottom, you want your feet up and knees in the mat, because Mike knows he's in trouble, 
you know, he's got a ring in his head. He says, this isn't good for me. Okay, he'll probably turn in, bridge, whatever. He's going to try to escape immediately. So we're going to address that, actually. So he's ready, even in practice, always be in a position where you're ready to, to, to work, okay? It's very important. All right. Now, we're going to concern ourselves with what Derek needs to do. We're going to keep Mike from getting up yeah. and from doing things to get away. Because Derek, you know, like with judo, sambo, submission grab, yeah. anything in the it's the referee's only going to give him so much time, okay? whatever the sport is. So he's got to pretty efficient. Right, so we're going to look at some things. Derek needs to do the key mic here until he can maybe arm lock him. They switch into a pin or a choke or you know, like a triangle or something, whatever they do. So there we go. First of all, he's got a good leg press going. He's got control of shoulders here. See how Mike's shoulders are crunched like this. He's not square. You know, we always use the analogy of bench pressing. You know, if you can't bench press like this very well. You can like this. So he's got his crunch lift there pretty good. So think, think you have basics, guys. Think of these things. Okay, now, Derek is automatically trapping Mike's arm. Can you see how he's got his left arm trapped and he's got a nice little thigh grip here? And, and, or he might do another one, but he's got good solid control here of Mike's arm. So he's trapped his arm. So his upper body, his shoulders here, are controlled, okay? Now think of also, it, it very, it, it's, it's good sound uh, methodology, the Kodakon Judo has the method. You've heard of things like Shiho, you know, like four corners, like Yoko Shiho Katami, you know, Kate Shiho, four corners. You want to control the four corners of his body, the two shoulders and the two hips, the four corners, okay? And that's kind of the methodology of that, just, just have the theory behind what we're doing here. Okay, so he's controlling pretty darn good here, up here. Got a good control here. I'd switch out because we're using it. Okay, okay so now, Mike's giving him a heck of a time. Mike is turning, fighting, whatever it is. Derek knows he's got a Check those hips. He's got to stop those hips from turning. Okay. A couple things he can do. All right. First one, Steve, come on over here so you can see. Everybody, come on over here so you can see Derek's hand on hip kick. He posted here. Now this, it's, it looks crazy, but it works. This hand right here really does prevent the bottom man from turning in quite a bit. And so Mike, Mike wants to turn in to shrimp to try to get out of the escape. And he may just keep working him. They may be real moving around. He may move him there. He has to keep him there to control. Okay? So that's a good way to park him there. That's one way to park him there. Other ways are, they simply just grab his pants and don't, or grab his hip. Grab some body part where he can't move, and you just keep working him, kind of work, yeah, work around a little bit, kind of semi-work, and Derek just stays on him. And eventually, Derek's thinking about, okay, eventually here, i got to start working this guy. So once he does, and Mike kind of settles down a little bit, or he parks him there, okay, as soon as he does, he switches, and he starts making him going for the, for the trap to get the lever of the arm, and works the juju, okay, to pop him free, get him out of there. So what we got to do is we got to keep him there for maybe not very long, but long enough to control them to work the arm on. And he okay, switched like a Uki Gatami. So let's say he can't get the arm on, okay? But he can shift up to a Uki Gatami to hold him there. And maybe Mike says, oh, I'm in trouble. And he may roll back to hit the Juju. Well, there you go. You got that. Okay, you've always got that. You got triangles from there. You know, you can you start working, you know, so there you go. So you've got to, you've got to park them there for as long as you can do something to the guy. Stay active. That's what we're talking about. So there are a lot of ways to do this. A couple other things here. I'm missing here. Grabbing the legs. So he might grab one or both legs or an ankle. Whatever it needs to be just to keep him from moving. By doing this, it traps Mike's arm with legs. Traps him. He doesn't have any base on him. There are these just general things to do that you will learn if you get this drill on this enough. That segment was almost five minutes long, but I think you got the point of what the leg press is about by watching that. And the stuff a lot of you already do anyway, but there's there, what I'm trying to present here is a methodology, a system to actually looking at how to control someone and setting them up for a jujigatami or a number of other things from this leg press position. Um, that being said, when you apply any type of submission hold, <clears throat> and probably pins as well, 
there are three primary factors that you have to do. You have to control your opponent. This certainly, this leg press position is a way to control your opponent. That's number one. Number two is to trap the arm. In this particular case, we're going for arm locks. You trap the affected thing. Uh, like if you're doing for a strangler, you're going to be trapping his neck in a way. But in this particular case, we're trapping the arm. And you'll see that in this, this upcoming video. And the third thing is to lever the arm straight out to, to actually apply the arm lock. So this next video is a little over two minutes, and it just points out how to trap and lever the arm and apply Jujigatami. So here we go on video number two. First, we're going to work on a grip break, then we're going to work on getting into a kick. Okay? So first things first, grip break. You remember how I said that there, I teach my guys layers of offense and layers of defense. We've gone over the layers of defense part. Now let's do the layers of offense. I flipped him over, okay? He's smart enough to get his hands together, so the bottom layer isn't quite working yet. So I have to do something to get to the point where my bottom layer works, okay? So the easiest one to get is this one. We grab the hand on the hip, okay, and we scoop up. I call it the uppercut, lever, there's a lot of other names for it. The important part is I'm not just going like this and sitting back, okay, because that usually isn't enough, okay? I got it that time, but if he's really, go ahead, really, okay? Even if I'm doing it that way. So what I have to do is I have to anchor his elbow over this way and then pull nice and hard, okay? And then it'll pop free. The easiest way to do that is just to reach through and grab your hip, okay? So whichever hand is closest to his belt, it slides through, grab your hip. Grab your belt, grab your pants, whatever it takes, okay? Then the other one slides through like you're uppercutting, and then I roll sideways. Don't roll back immediately, roll sideways. We don't bench press like this, right? We don't... Uh, <laughs> okay. We always work and square angles when we're in the weight room. That's how we get strong. That's how our joints usually work. So I'm going to take him out of part. He's weak. I'm going to go sideways. Boom. There he goes. Okay. And then I always finish flat on my back. Okay. So again, I get him right where I want him. I try the first layer. Okay. Not working. So I grab my, my thigh, scoop up like an uppercut, go sideways, and when it pops free, I finish on my back. Now in that video, uh, Derek showed the first lever that I teach, the first trap and lever technique that I teach. There are a lot of ways to trap the guy's arm, trap the opponent's arm, and pry it out free. That, that thigh grab and uppercut was generally the first thing that I teach students and because it works so well. It has such a high rate of success, and um, it, you'll see it in all levels of competition no matter what. So it's, it's a good, solid foundation to start. Again, there are a lot of ways to do that, in particular to, to trap and lever, but that's a good way to start a new student, certainly. And <clears throat> train on that often as you get better. It's, just, it's really money in the bank, I think. Okay, the third one. This third video is about three and a half minutes long, and we're going to uh, look at some drills you can do to, con you know, to, to use the leg press. You know, it's it's something you can drill on anything, any skill, no matter what, whether it's judo, sambo, jujitsu, anything, you can make a drill about it. And this is certainly an important phase of our grappling, and it's worthy of having some drills made up about. So uh, we're going to look at some drill training for the leg press in this next video right now. the uh, leg press and Mike is basically riding John in the leg press position to set him up for a jujigatami. Stay on him, keep riding him and controlling him. Let's say Mike has turned him over in a head roll juji or spinning juji or somehow he's rolled him over onto the back, followed through from a, a throw to a transition. He's, he's on the ground with him and he may need to keep, Mike may need to keep John here for a period of time before he can secure a lever. To pry the arm. Just to trap and lever the arm from a leg press position. And um, we're just drilling on this. The top guy is working on doing a lot of repetitions and getting his favorite lever. And uh, in this case, Dre is working on a nice uh, lapel grab and arm hook lever. He does a bunch of repetitions, and now it looks like it's going to be Ken's turn. And it's a skill drill. 
And uh, we start with controlling him in a good leg press, as you can see Ken doing here. And he's just working on digging in. The bottom guy gives very varying degrees of resistance. And you kind of work it out with your partner how you want to do it, or the coach may decide, okay, we're going to do you know, 20% resistance or 50% or whatever it may be. And we're just working on the skill of getting him on his, he's already on his back, and we're working a uh, lever, a trap and a lever. Trap is when you trap his arm to your chest or torso, and lever is when you pry it loose. And this is just a, uh, a trap and lever drill from the leg press. All right. So you remember how we were saying before, you have to put your heels in and your knees together, right? That's how you get a nice, good, tight arm lock, okay? When my feet are straight and I'm off the floor and my knees are wide, okay? That's when you see the guys flipping their, their thumbs around and doing this kind of stuff, okay? It's because I've got no control whatsoever. I can even be sitting here doing this and I have to really put my hips up, okay? So this is a drill that I make my guys do a lot, okay? So we're gonna start like this, all right? It isn't working, okay? I'm gonna pull my heels in and squeeze my knees together. That's all it takes, right? Pull your heels in, squeeze your knees together. Boom, okay? Then I'm gonna scoot back, okay? Take his arm down, see how it's not working, okay? Heels in, knees together, sit up, come back, okay? Scoot back, heels in, knees together, go back. Okay? Scoot back. See, every single time I'm doing this, he's out of the arm block. And I'm pulling him in with my feet. Alright, so we're going to start there, and we're going to do two lines. Okay, and go all the way across the mat. Alright, it's going to be hard at first, but the more you do this drill, the easier it becomes. And the tighter you're on. Boom, okay? I go back a foot. One more. Really squeeze him in, and sit up if you can. Go back. Go. Each time I'm arm locking in between here, okay? Good. And if you're too bored with it, you just stay sitting up. It's a lot harder. You get the idea. Okay? Make sense? And maybe you don't drill on leg press position, you know, all the time, but every so often it, it is a pretty good idea to, to, to train on this, to drill on this. And we, we showed you some different drills you can use um, that really work. And um, again, maybe not every practice, but certainly every so often add it to your training program and it really does help you in this skill. Um, okay, now we're going to look at the um, leg press to a sankaku uh, in this next video. It's a little over a minute, minute and 20 seconds or so. And uh, Steve Potter, one of my good black belts in jiu-jitsu and also in judo, uh, is showing this. We were, we were having a good workout, <clears throat> and we were showing different ideas, and Steve was was teaching this particular leg press. Uh, did a good, really good job of it, so I captured it on video. Uh, but uh, this is the basics of it, okay? There are a lot of ways to apply sankaku jume. Um, from this position, the triangle choke. But this is how the, 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 our approach to it basically, this is our basic approach to doing Sankaku Jume from the leg press position. So let's take a look at that right now. showed this to me, uh, I tried it up in St. Joe, and I was going against this uh, demo and this bigger guy, and, and we were doing this, and he said, oh, you know, that's fantastic, who's going to fall for this? And then we are doing Randori later that evening, and uh, I suckered him right into it, because, oh, it works. So I can't, yeah, I can't get the arm press, you know, you know, so nothing's working. So he has this room in here, Eric has this room, so I can just slip his leg right through here. So the, so the leg is actually closest to his legs, the, the, that's yeah. across his body. You pop it up and slip it through. There you go. And we'll okay. Pull on him, and, and Eric's going to go with me because he doesn't want his arm bar. Boom. Then you just form that pillow right there. Press what? And there's a <laughs> double trouble move with the arm bar. And, the and you got the triangle choke and you got the juju gatami. Let's look at that again. So you got him leg press. Now watch, you make yourself, and look at, you're, with your left leg, you're kind of controlling his head. You're kind of show, being nice to him right now, but you kind of uh, press it at first and then move it out slightly so you have room to work, don't you? Okay, now your right leg is filtered through. You roll back on your right hip, the hip closest to his hip, form your triangle. See that? Kick your leg over. And now when you finish him back down, you can end up right in Ojuji. And you can choke him from that position as well. 
And as I said before we went to that video clip, there are a, a lot of ways to apply Sankaku from this position. There are a lot of ways to apply Sankaku Jume from any position, but certainly from this one as well. So, but that's a starter. That, that's, that's how we like to see, at least in my club, how we start people out on this particular technique. Okay, so let's stay with some leg chokes here. And we're going to look at now in this, uh, this next video, uh, Ashi Jume, leg strangle, okay, leg constriction. And in it, we're going to show... Uh, how you can form a sankaku from it, but some, some ways to use your leg and grabbing your leg to strangle your opponent from the leg press position. So we'll take a look at that right now. A leg press situation. You know, Derek's got Mike down, he's rolling him, how he's rolling him, here he is, okay? And he's got, you know, Mike's obviously defending, he wants to keep his arm straight. And Derek is really trying to get that Jujigatami. Okay, it's a great position for it. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to choke him. We're going to, we're going to actually get a strangle, actually, because we're going to work this, this leg choke here. So this is there are a lot of different ways to choke somebody with your legs from this position. Here is one of them. And this is a good one. It's very rather simple and straightforward, okay? Um, what, what he's going to do, he's going to keep thinking, Mike, you know, defend here, defend here, okay? And what he's going to do is he's going to filter this leg through here. He's going to pop it open just enough to filter it through and the, the leg closest to Mike's legs here. And he slips it under and he gets this nice, nasty leg choke. Okay? All right, let's take a look at that. Okay? Yeah, just go ahead and do one. Okay. You know. There you go. Now, what you can't see is what he's doing here with his arms. We're going to show that in a minute. But let's look at the big picture here. So, again, Mike's cooperating now. Okay, now, we, we want to make some opening here. So the leg closest to the feet, you're going to kind of, with your heel, kind of pop that open and slide it through. That helps open the hole. We want to open the hole. Now, he's got, his, he's got a clear way through here. Now, as soon as he does that, he wants to reach under his head. Okay, even if you have to pop Mike up a little bit with his his arm like this, like you shove it under a little bit, there he does it, and he filters it there. Now, here's where the choke, the actual strangle comes in. Right here, this leg, this, this bottom part of his leg, the lower half of his leg, right along Mike's carotid here, okay? Now, by grabbing under Mike's head and trapping it, he's got a really nasty triangle, you know, the, the leg choke there. Now, what he can do here with this hand, just to make it work, go ahead and grab your forearm, go ahead and grab your forearm. Do that, and that just kind of cinches it in nice and tight. It's like a nutcracker, okay? And that's what happens. Now, you don't have to have this arm. You can do other things with it. You can grab his lapel or just not, you can just hold his arm. You've got a good choke here, okay? Now, another way to make it nastier is to kind of come up as you roll back. Rolling back helps, and then triangle that makes it nastier. Okay? Really, it's kind of a no-lose situation if you're Derek here because you're winning. You're, you got him in a, you know, position here. And even if you can, you can sit up and go to and hold down some kind of an osakomi situation. But it's a very strong situation here, okay? It's very strong. The only thing I say is come back to the start. Now, some people might have trouble doing this. When you filter your leg through, okay, when you filter your leg through, try to, try to, and try to get that down as far as you can here. As soon as you do that, change your legs. Think about that. I, I'm not a real bright guy, so I have to think about what happens next, okay? As soon as that happens. Now, you've got that nice and low. That's when he starts to slide under the head. And catch it. Now you'll find some people will slide under palm up, palm sideways, palm down. It doesn't matter. And you say, well, which way should I do it? Whatever works for you. But all you want to do is make sure you get your right hand on your left ankle. And that, see how that, he's already got it going. Okay. Now he could keep it just the arm, but he adds a little more by grabbing here. Okay. He rolls back, and there's the net. And if he had, and again, if he's a really strong guy, strong neck, and you can't get the choke, then the fat, okay, and that helps. I'm sure there are other ways to do it too, but that's all I figured out. So, you know, going fat. Leg strangles are really powerful, especially from this particular position, because you are in a really strong advantage over your opponent. He's on his back, pretty vulnerable, quite vulnerable. And uh, if you can apply some of these leg leg uh, ashi jume, these leg stra strangles, very effective. So that showed a little bit of that. Again, those are some kind of basic ideas, but you get the idea that you can take that. Uh, again, as with all our videos, whatever you see, take it, adapt it, make it work for you, add to it. 
that's how the stuff gets better. So that being said, this uh, sixth video, <clears throat> we're going to look at the leg position. As I said earlier, the um, uh, just to jump gears here real quick, uh, the, the leg press position isn't just the Jujigatami position, and this is why. You're going to see how you can convert or transition from the leg press to Ukigatami, uh, you know, the straddle hold, back to Juji, uh, back to Tate Shiho Gatami, vertical pins. You, you, can, you can see how you can use the leg, pres, leg press as your platform, your, your, your launching pad to pin your opponent, but also to use for, uh, for uh, Juji Gatami as well. So uh, this next video is almost six minutes, five, 545 long, um, but it's worth the time to study this. And uh, so let's take a look at various ways to go from leg press to Uki Gatami to other pins and maybe back into Juji Gatami. So we'll take a look at that right now. Okay, and this is this is a really good move. And um, it's Uki Uki Gatami. Straddle hole. Uki like in like in a judo sense can be like a floating Uki Otoshi floating drop throw, you know. But in this case it also means to straddle over something, to skim over the top of something. That's what Uki, U-K-I means, okay? In this case, Uki, Gatami, straddle hole. I'm straddling him over the top. So, Derek's got Mike in a really good uh, leg press position. He's really working at Juji, but Mike's been eating his Wheaties, and he's just, you know, Derek can't, you know, lever that arm free, okay? So, a good plan B is to go right to the straddle hole, which could lead right into, like, a mount or Tate Shiho Gatami or any other number of things. But what we're going to do today, right now, anyway, is... Do the ukigatami, and he's going to realize he's in a bad position, so he's been probably going to sit up or you know try to get his arm, you know, get out of that. And Derek's going to flip right back into a jujigatami. Okay, so we're going to we're going to see how it works from that position, and then we're going to work into a pin of, a, of itself. So Derek's got him here, and he's decided, okay, ukigatami time. Now what he does is look what he does is guys, he actually kind of does almost the splits. Okay. When he does this now, he takes, look at this left hand, control here, he puts it on his thigh for control, so he's really trapped Mike's arms really well, okay? Now as he does that, he throws the top leg back and he puts it, he just sits like his knee in, and he reaches over here and he grabs Mike, he could post, he could, whatever he wants to do, Derek likes to grab, so that, and so, there's the straddle hold right there. He's got him there for, he could hold him there for a while, okay? Now. He would probably transition from this if he just wanted to pin him right up into a mount or a Tate Shihogatami, vertical four corner hole. Okay? And then he could also work any other stuff from there if you want to finish him off with a Juji Udigarami, which is most common. But there you have a nice series there. But let's work, let's really play him. I'll tell you where I first saw this move. Two guys from Britain did this, Neil Eckersley and Stephen Gawthorne. They were they were both uh, Olympic bronze medalists in 1984 for Great Britain. And they were masters of Nawaza. They were just fabulous. And both of them did this with great skill, especially Gawthorpe, I think. But Eckers Eckersley was quite good at it himself, so probably both good. But anyway, this isn't exactly how they did it, but it's, this is kind of the way we developed it over the years. So he's doing the, uh, the leg press. He's got Mike. And uh, go ahead and start with that, the leg press, like you got in there. Okay, now, he wants to make sure, guys, you got to you pre be precise. When he, do, when he decides he's going to go for the straddle hold, okay, Uki Gatami, he shifts here, and look at that hand on his thigh, okay? Now, uh, a guy like Jimmy Pedro uh, would grab the, the belt. He, he would just hold that belt like that. That's good, too, okay? So that's, that's a good situation if you want to do that. We grab the thigh because we get a good... You don't have to. Try the belt grab. It works great, too, okay? Your right. belt or his belt? His belt. His right. belt. Can you yeah. see that? Okay. His belt. Now, when he does this, he's going to shoot this leg back, and he's going to kind of straddle it. Notice how? See how he's kind of in a straddle position here? And there's he came up here like this to hold. You could be grabbing through the middle of his legs, wherever you wanted to grab. You could grab his leg, and even you know like hold on to it. You know whatever you like there. But in this case, he's doing this. Now Mike figures out, holy schmoly, I'm in trouble. You know, so he's going to try to maybe sit up or whatever, or he's going to try to get out of the pin. And as soon as he does that, he forgot Derek can whip right back into a juji and finish him. So it's leg press, you know, 
get the juji, try the juji. He's not buying into it. Straddle hold. He, he forgets that. He comes up and can finish out Say, with the juji. Here's a situation that could come up, guys, that, that may happen. We've tried this. Derek's tried this, and Mike's tried to get out, but he said, no, I'm, I'm still not giving you that arm. You know, so he, Derek's gone back with the Juji Gatami, but Mike isn't giving up that arm. So Derek should say, okay, I'll roll you back down into a leg press, and I'll come back into my straddle hold, and now I'll just go right into a mount or Tate Shio Gatami. Now I've got him. And okay. now you've got time. you got him in a good time hold. We'll say Komani, good time hold. You can go into a bent arm lock, or you can work for a choke, or you can come back out to a Juji Gatami if you want. Does the Ugi Gatami count as a time hold? Yeah, sure. Yes. Okay. Yes, it, it really does. So I mean, you're, you're, you're st he's not getting up and you're controlling his body. Right. And if he's not fighting too much, you can just leave him there. You can hold him there. Just hold him there and get you know, your time. I, I've, I've seen people do this. I saw, uh, I've seen a number of guys do this uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. with, with good success and just keep him there and ride him. You know, like if you're doing in judo, it's only a 20-second ride anymore, okay? okay? In sambo, freestyle judo, I can hold that for maybe 20 seconds, get my four points in, and go right to the submission. So, you know, you, you can see how this really has... But you notice, be careful to do some things. When he's going to go for the straddle hold of Uki Kitami, notice the change here. He wants... To, this is anchor, okay? Now, he does that. Uh, now he reaches up, and we'll see how he's straddling here. Now, you, some guys have their knees a little closer to the head. You have that real tight in, okay? Some guys have a little wider base. You, see out here, there's posting. Guys, play with this. It's a really skilled move. I first saw the um, that uh, leg press to Ukigatami quite a number of years ago uh, with um, a number of uh, Brits that were just fabulous at Jujigatami. Um, one was Neil Eckersley, another was Stephen Gawthorpe, both Olympic medalists in 1984 for, for Great Britain. Um, Neil Adams did it as well, and other people as well. But uh, those two guys, Eckersley and Gawthorpe, I thought really were, to me anyway, that's where I first saw them actually do it, I think, in, in a competition somewhere in an international, or may, may, maybe it was on a video, I just don't remember, but it was a, many years ago. But I'll tell you what, it stood the test of time. That is an excellent move, that Uki Gatami. Uh, that's a variation of doing it, and right back into Juji. It's caught a lot of people cold with that, that you know, pinning, and then go back into the arm lock. So it's a great move. Um, and the other things we showed there was well, the control into the leg press into a pins. So you see, it's not just for Juji Gatami. So it's not just the Juji Gatami position. Give it its own name. It's 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 worthy of it. Okay, this uh, last one is uh, about 3:45 long, also about three minutes 45 seconds, and. Once you get him down in the uh, leg press position, you don't have to do Jujigatami. You don't have to pin him. You can do something else. And we're going to show a, a, a really cool compression uh, Udigarami. It's the, uh, you know, the, the arm entanglement. It's a bent arm lock. So we're going to take a look at that right now. And it's, it's, this, is a, this is a good move. This will catch a lot of people cold. So let's watch the uh, compression Udigarami from the leg press right now. What we're going to do is we're going to get in our, our same arm bar lever position, but sometimes you don't always get that hook. Sometimes they have a really deep grip like this, and you have trouble getting your hands in. So what we're going to do instead is basically apply a, a bicep crush on it and make them let go or make them tap out from the crush. What's important to remember is I'm still putting my hand on the, the thigh over here, so I lock his elbow in. Or if you've got a gi, you can also use it to keep that, that elbow locked in. I usually do the hip, okay? Now, I might add, guys, remember the, the hand that Derek's doing, in case this case is left, but it's the one that's the, the nearest to Mike's legs, okay? So if you think of it in those terms, in this case, instead of left or right, the one closest to his legs, that's the one he's coming over, and his left hand is now anchoring on his thigh. So that's providing a good anchor and it kind of traps the guy's arm. Okay. Right. Okay. So the next step is I'm going to take my leg that's closest to his belt or his legs and I'm going to drape it across almost like I'm crossing, you know, my legs like this. But I'm going to put it down on his wrist. Okay. What this does is it starts compressing his elbow. Usually they'll let go at that point. And if he does, I just grab it and go for the, the arm lock. But if he's a tough guy, He'll keep that those hands together, and you bring that through, and just lean back a little bit, and that's where the crush comes from. Okay. Now, if he's especially tough, we'll pop this through, 
and get back, okay? Occasionally, he's super, super tough. You catch that, you roll to the side, bring this up, and then kick back towards his head. Okay? So, first one, bring it down and just try and push down towards his chest and lean back, okay? It'll either pop back or it'll tap. Okay, if you feel you need to, you can bring this up here and then just do that. And I'm not triangling to hold it, I'm triangling to push my leg down towards the mat. So once it comes up, you stomp your foot down and that gets the tap. Okay? And then if you really, really want to be mean about it, as soon as you catch this, you roll and then you bring this up and then kick back towards his head. Now, by the way, he's coaching, but with his right hand, he'd have it controlling. You know, you'd be using your right hand to kind of you oh, yeah. have in there. So kind of show a little realistic like you'd be doing okay, it. Okay, so I'm coming through here, catch this. We can pop that through there and sit back. Or I can catch through there and sit back, okay? If it pops free, boom, you've got the arm lock, okay? Likewise, if I'm here coming through and it pops through, going through for arm locks here okay so you can also bring it up and pull through like this and then squeeze or bring that through squeeze okay it's Good. really a nasty nobody thinks it would hurt but it does a lot yeah it really does and it's a win-win you either get the, the, the tap from the crush or he lets go of his, his hands or his wrist and you get the arm lock. So Yeah, you can get the juju from there. Just remember, this foot controls the head until this foot comes over. If I try and do it this way, he sits up and now I don't have anything, okay? So always keep control of his head with this one until you bring it over. Then it's okay to bring it back down and stomp that foot down because now I'm controlling his head as well as squeezing. Okay? That's, a good, that's a good point for control. Yeah, where his head is. Yeah, very good point. Good. Okay, want to try So you can see from the leg press position, there are a lot of things you can do to somebody. It's a, it's a very vulnerable, vulnerable position for your opponent to be in, laying flat on his back, belly up, and in trouble and and you're calling the shots there you're winning so you know just be, you know as we talked about in the video in some places different videos um take your time but do it in a hurry be efficient in your movements uh you only have so long that the referee and whatever sport you're in will give you to control your opponent there and also if you've got a skilled opponent you're probably not going to hold him there on his back a really whole long time so you have to be uh, good at riding them, as, as you saw in one of the videos of how to control them. You have to be good at that, but you also have to be very efficient in working quickly but effectively to the next move to, to from the control position to the trap position to trap his arm and to lever it out and get the submission. So um, it, it's, 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 it's a very efficient chain of events leading with the control in the leg press position. So leg press is certainly one of those positions that is like the, the cement that holds the bricks together. Uh, and the bricks being the, uh, the leg lock or the arm lock in this particular case, the, the leg press position is that cement that holds those bricks together to make it happen. So it's uh, it, you know something to practice on, something to do. Uh, I think it's worthy of, of everybody's study on a regular basis. So, uh, um, and by the way, uh, shameless plug, uh, I cover the leg press position quite a bit in my book, Jujigatami Encyclopedia. So if you want to know more about that, buy that book. I'm very proud of it, and it's a, it's a great reference guide for Jujigatami. Okay, that pretty much wraps up the show, and I do appreciate you uh, tuning in and watching again. Uh, I love doing these shows, and I love your feedback. I get a lot of it, and I really appreciate that. Keep the emails coming in. A lot of good questions are coming in, so I'll try to hit them all in different episodes. So uh, again, as always, thanks so much, and I will see you next time. Next time.